Hi guys, this is Dan here uh, from FBA Legends, and I have a very special guest, uh, Paul from Wordtree. And just a quick background about me. I know most people know me already from the group, but I do FBA, um, I have an FBA journey that I'm working on. And Wordtree was one of the programs that I came across uh, from another friend that's working at FBA as well. And he recommended Wordtree to me and I started using it and it was an absolutely amazing program. Um, I kind of did all my keyword research right away on that and it really helped my listing and seeing, like visually seeing percentage and what's going on, it really helps. But without me talking too much, I want Paul to introduce himself and just tell us, what is Wordtree? Hi Dan, hi guys. Well, my name's Paul Scary. I've been uh, selling on Amazon for over five years now. Uh, Wordtree is owned by me and my brother and my cousin. My brother has more of a background in uh, search engines. He's built on before, and so he has a pretty good knowledge of that. Uh, so that that's how we were able to build the, uh, some of the back-end stuff of this tool. And then my cousin is a web programmer and he's been selling on Amazon for over five years too. So. Cool. Great team. Yeah. We kind of felt like there was kind of a gap in the market for uh, keyword tools and uh, we were just finding we were spending way too much time on these tools and they just, it was not very scientific. Everything was kind of guesswork and we were never quite sure how mm -hmm. good a job we had done. So no, you, you guys did a good job. I mean, I think it helps a lot of people help me for sure. And I know I, it was recommended to me by a good friend. So I know it helped him too. So that's well, awesome. Yeah. I'm glad, glad, glad to hear it. Cause yeah, we've worked really hard on this and it's been, uh, you know, we started back in July now. So. Wow. You guys has grown a lot since then. It's amazing. Uh, Wordtree, uh, we're basically doing everything around keywords to help your listing keywords optimize. And um, we have some other tools so you can like help to make uh, different decisions as to like PPC or maybe you want to work on um, giveaways or uh, what would be some other thing? You want to do some A-B testing, things like that. Cool. Okay. So a lot of members in our groups are asking about uh, how to do proper keyword research. And I'm, I don't know if you can show your screen maybe and even show us uh, how WordTree operates. Yeah. That would be really sure. helpful. Um, let's do that now. I was going to do like a video myself, but I'm sure you'll explain it way better than I can. Yeah, I'll do my best here. Um, so we'll start from scratch here. Let's see, put that over. So let's say that my product is Jungle Scout, Jungle Sticks. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so we'll just copy out our ASIN here. And, uh, so you come in, you can run a report here, um, put in your ASIN, choose your marketplace. We're currently supporting the United States, United Kingdom and Canada. And then you just hit, so we're doing United States and then next. And then you just uh, go over here. And so I chose bamboo sticks and now We'd look at our competitors and see uh, who's related to us. Uh, I find that uh, this Jungle Scout Pro is pretty helpful um, because now I can look at the sales here. Yeah, and then choose out my best competitors. I and I, you know, I only want to choose the ones that are actually directly competing with me, and uh, actually know what they're doing. I don't want anybody that's uh, got poor rankings and uh, probably has poor keywords in the back. Mm -hmm. And then just to add a word tree is connected directly to the Amazon sellers account. So it takes the information from there. Is that right? Uh, the, yeah, the sales volume for exact 
and for broad is both pulled directly from Amazon's ad servers because uh, we found this leak in their ad servers and so that data is uh, up to date and directly pulled from Amazon. Mm -hmm. Uh, so now I just pull one of these, let's say this one. Um, let's see. Mm. Yeah. Let's go there. All right. So I'll take this one and we'll put in the ASIN again. Uh, I lost it. There you go. All right. Then I put in the competitor, and let's. I would, you know, probably choose out all the best ones, not necessarily ten. It's better to just have uh, good quality ones yeah. instead of quantity. But if you can find ten, great. And then hit next, and then you just purchase the report. Uh, the first report is. $10 or 50% off. And then after that, they're 20. Yeah. Most people will first look at the numbers before they even see the value of this program. So uh, I know you have a $10 package and then you have some monthly packages too, which I believe open up to a lot more. Well, the monthly is for a rank tracker. Okay. Um, this is the bulk credit. So you could buy bulk reports here. Mm -hmm. So five plus 14 per let kind of see what you got. The rank trackers plans, I can show you that. So this is for our, our rank tracker here. Yeah. Um, this is going to be, well, we'll get to that next. But, sure, sure, yeah. Okay. I'll let you do your thing. Um, so let's let's just to speed things up. I'll just show you what it looks like after the report's been finished. Yeah. Um, so I got, uh, so in the meantime, you picked out the top ASINs um, that correspond to your listing, the competitors, and then yeah. okay. Um, so yeah, I chose out the ones, the ASINs I wanted. Normally I would have done more than I showed there, but, um, all right, there you go. Um, so now just refresh this. So now the there's the broad volume, exact volume for each of these. And then we have a relevancy score. So this is gonna be how relevant it is to your listing. So you could sort it by volume or relevancy. So you could go and change it up like that. Um, and so then how, we, how would one, like um, a beginner comes in, does this report, and they look at the volume, what should they keep in mind or like what is the first step here? Well, I generally, I like, I think sorting by relevancy score is gonna be best. Um, and then so sales velocity is gonna be for a giveaway. And so you'd know how many units you would need to give away for eight days or this many every day for eight days to so get up to the number one spot for s'more sticks for example you okay. give out 42 every day for eight so days. for example marshmallow roasting sticks i'll have to give away 61 units per day for eight days to rank for that keyword yeah mm -hmm. okay um so generally i'm using these phrases to build up my listing if it was a brand new listing that is yeah um, so i'd look at like what customers are actually searching and then I put it those into my title as the most important. So, uh, you know, like roasting sticks looks like it's got lots of volume. It's very relevant to my listing. So I probably want that in my title. 
and yeah. probably marshmallow sticks. I try to work that into, and I just kind of um, look at the top phrases here, and then I try to come up with a, a title that makes sense and is going to convert well. You don't really need to worry too much about uh, the phrases. You want to, you know, write good copy as opposed to just trying to get keywords in. Mm -hmm. just, you can always put keywords into the back end or description and work them in there. This is, it's most important to just write good ad copy. That's going to convert to a sale. Yeah. Cause people are going to read this. It has to make sense. Yeah. That's the most important uh, at this point, but th this gives you an idea of what customers are searching for. What it. They're, and if they, if it matches what they search, then it's more likely to convert. Yeah. And then, so now I take this, go over to this listing builder here. In this case, um, here, we'll start over. Uh, in. So we can import in his listing. Okay. Um, so we could, use, well, here, I can show you. If you have nothing at first, then you can just start taking these mm -hmm. over and building your listing out with some of these put them in the bullet points, figuring out, you know, which are your most important because everything's ranked by volume here. And you'll just kind of look through, pick out the ones that make sense and are going to work with your copy, mm -hmm. uh, working top down. And then uh, after you've kind of built out your listing, you have the leftover keywords, you'll want to kind of try to work those into, um, well, here's your description. So you work them into description and then whatever's left over, you can put into these search terms and the subject matter. And just so kind of just a quick question for you. Um, the search term as the keywords in the back end. Is that correct? Yeah. The, so these, both these, the search terms and the subject matter are both in the back end. So, so what's the difference in subject matter and search term? Uh, both of them should index a hundred percent, but from our testing, we found that if you're having a search term that you're having trouble with, it's not indexing with in Amazon, then it's better to put that term into the subject matter to get it to index. Okay. So um, on the subject matter, you will put a keyword comma, another keyword comma and so on. Uh, no commas, just space. Oh, okay. And it's just, you just need individual keywords. So you don't need these whole uh, phrases here. You only need the individual terms. So the only thing you're worrying about is getting these in into yeah. your listing somewhere. And then that will index all the phrases. So Okay, I have another question here. When I was re doing the keywords for my listing, a lot of my competitors' keywords were showing up. And I'm talking about their company name. Would you recommend using that as a keyword? No, the uh, the brand names. Uh, yeah, a lot of people do put the brand names into the back end or into a listing somewhere, but it's against Amazon's terms of service, so it's uh, it's risky to do that. I've ha I haven't actually heard of Amazon uh, banning or suspending people for doing that, but. You never know what they're not Amazon. worth it, but the, the brand names can be used in PPC campaigns. That's why we've included them. Mm -hmm. so, so I, I do recommend using them in your PPC campaigns. Got it. Okay. Um, and yeah, yeah. It's up to you if you're going to want to use brand names in your back end. Yeah, just stay safe, just use everything around at first, and then if you really have to, take the risk, yeah. I guess. Okay. Yeah, I can't really recommend it. But. Yeah. Um, so we have this tool here. Um, let's start over. Um, let's. So in this case, we already have an established listing, so we can import in the listing. Um, it imp it'll import it in everything but the back end stuff because we haven't integrated with the seller account. We decided that people probably didn't, they'd rather just keep anonymous, or keep their data anonymous. Mm -hmm. So we did not have it pull in the back end. So you can manually take your back end and add them in or just uh, 
work with our okay. testing. So now you can see then which uh, phrases he's missed and you can see which unique words haven't been used within the listing. So you can see that some of these are actually really pretty good and he's missing some sales because he didn't add these in. Um, so you kind of look at this and decide on some of these if you wanted to like try to work these in to the bullet points or into your description or you just want to um, take these term these last unique words and then throw them into the back end here okay how much should we pay attention to the percentage at the top like it's a 64 percent there well I, I always try to get i try to get it as close to 100 as possible the um sometimes you're gonna run across some of these words that just don't really fit or they're a brand name so you just drop those off mm -hmm. it's i mean you just kind of want to look here and work in as many as makes sense yeah okay um let's see and then there's little pencil icons next to each of these so you would i recommend looking at your category and then seeing what the character limits are for your category and then adjust, changing these out. Uh, this is, we've chose the ones that are most common, but it's a good idea to double check with your specific category. Okay, interesting. Because if, if you go over the character limit, Amazon will de-index you for the field. 250 I know is the limit recommended for most of the lines there, right? All five yeah. bullets. Uh -huh. So I can see why you have 250 there too. Yeah. So if you want to change it, then you just put yeah. there. Um, so then, you know, after you're done, we have this free tool here. Uh, so you can put in your ASIN and then, so let's see. Would this also work for a listing that's not live? Yeah. Uh, oh, that's not live? No, this yeah. would be... This, this for is a live to, listing. Yeah. This is to see after you've built your listing and everything and the, and the listing's live and you want to know, is are these keywords showing up in Amazon searches? Got it. Um, because it's possible you went over a character limit somewhere. Mm -hmm. or, um some of them are just like more problematic for some reason. Uh, so then you might have to like add the entire phrase somewhere instead yeah. of just individual keyword and then probably get it that way. So we we'll just go over here to the report and then we would copy out the all 644, drop them right in here. And then we would check the phrases and see what's being indexed. Yeah, I'll take that it. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the order. Um, while that's running, let's go over to rank tracking. It's a lot of information to observe for beginners. Yeah. <laughs> but it's great, great information for sure. Yeah, this can really make the biggest difference to people's sales and it doesn't hardly cost anything where yeah. when you start running these PPC campaigns and you don't really know what you're doing, it's it yeah. really expensive. Um, so definitely a cheaper way to get everything set up right. Yeah. yeah. Or, um, okay, so we've had this one running a while, so it's got good data on it. Um, so now like we can see we're ranking on bamboo skewers and we can add in a competitor and see where their rankings are compared to us. So interesting. 37 and just can add or remove them as needed. So this shows you a live view of your keyword that you've targeted. 
where you are on it on Amazon. Yeah. It shows you, yeah, it's a, where, you, where you've been every day now. And then you can see your change over time and where your competitors have been. Mm -hmm. And so that, that's where I was showing that yeah. this is the pricing for ranking. And it's mostly just the keywords tracked is what the different plans are about. Yeah. You can do as many different, um, you can take like this hundred, have as many cr across as many listings as you want and up to 10 competitors for each of the ASINs. Mm -hmm. You can just spread it around. See where you're indexing, where you're not. So you can see like his listing isn't, you know, he's missing this term here this one here and this here. So maybe if you messed up on your listing, you'd see big chunks of uh, phrases that aren't indexing and you could come back and look through your fields and see if you went over somewhere. Yeah, this is just a very visual report. Yeah. Okay. So, and for this, um, like the rank track you would generally would be used for like A-B testing or maybe a giveaway. Maybe like you want to change out your title, change out some bullet points, try working in a different phrase that might get you more sales. And, and then you could see what's happening over time, see what competitors are, are doing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I cover everything. Yeah, that was really thorough. I did not expect that. Um, that's awesome. I hope that answers most of the questions that people have in our group. But uh, Paul, uh, I do really, really appreciate the time you took to, to go through this. Uh, I think it's going to help a lot of people. And we will post our link. Yeah. Okay, well, Paul, I really appreciate it. I don't want to take too much of your time. But uh, this will be posted in our group, on our YouTube channel. And I uh, hope it helps everyone as well. Yeah. Well, thank you, Dan. Thanks for doing the interview and appreciate it. Thank you so much.